Three long days from I don't know It takes a little more than what you show And that's yesterday Yeah, yesterday Recording from Cub Content Studios, welcome to Bobby Finn Knows Everyone, a Pull Tab Sports production. I am Bobby Finn, born and bred on St. Paul's East Side, where it's all about looking out for each other, blue-colored hard work, and telling it like it is. No BS, and that's what you're going to get on our podcast. East Side Straight Talk in a world that's gone a little sideways. With me, as always, my co-host, Tommy Lord. How are you, Tom? Hey, buddy. Doing good. How are you? I am very good. Good. And our producer, as always, Chris Salazar. What's up, Sally? Yo, 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 what's up, fellas? Sally. We have a very, very cool special guest today, legendary KSTP News sports anchor Joe Schmidt. How are you, Joe? I'm good. I'm good, Bobby. How are you doing? We're doing great, man. This is going to be a fun, fun pod here. So I appreciate uh, taking time out of your busy, busy schedule. I mean, with all our sports teams doing so well right now, uh, you're pulled in a million directions, I'm sure. I have a few things going on, but that's all right. I like being busy, and uh, hey, it's been a while since Minnesota has uh, basked in the uh, sports limelight here, so let's take advantage of it. Absolutely. So I'm glad we were able to get you on in the middle of this glory that we have going on because we all uh, are afraid at some point we're going to come to a crashing halt yep. like it's always been. But no, we're not, Bobby. We're we're keeping on strong. We're going natties. We're going chips for everything. Chips for everything. Yep. All right. Well, yeah. Hell is freezing over then. <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> but uh, let's, let's get into this. Joe, huh? you've, you've seen a lot. You've been on uh, KSTP for, since 1985. Is that right? That was uh, June 26, 1985. The opening day of Canterbury Downs was my first day oh, wow. at KSTP. And uh, back then, Canterbury was called Canterbury Downs, and it was a really big deal when they had the horse track uh opening we must have had 50 people from kstp out there so i remember my first day very well god everybody was bet betting on joe schmidt that day i like it <laughs> 40 <laughs> years joe schmidt <laughs> yeah they they thought i was one of the guys following the horses picking up the manure that's it you know <laughs> <laughs> nobody knew who i was <laughs> yeah that's great yeah i remember the canterbury back in that day it was it was a big i mean it was an event when you went to watch the horses as a family or you know or whoever you're with and it was an event well think about this we used to we used to run a highlight of a or a finish of a race almost every night on our sports cast you know wow. whether it was a daily double or the pick six or whatever and uh you know <laughs> we would never do anything like that now but uh, that's how big a deal it was back then right god yeah absolutely well there's a lot happening now and you've seen a lot over the years joel i mean Talk about some of the, your favorite memories over the years of, you know, we've got a nice little list here as well. Uh, we'll get into a little sports moment bracket for you to help us fill out. Do you have any highlights that you just remember covering or, or, or things that maybe the public hasn't seen be, behind the scenes? Well, you know, it's it's always interesting. I get this question a lot, and, you know, automatically you go to, you know, the 87 and 91 World Series because you know, those were, you know, iconic times here in Minnesota, and, I always think back to the homecoming after the Twins had defeated Detroit and uh, for the pennant, and they came back knowing they were in the World Series, and they had the homecoming at the Metrodome, and they maybe expected 20,000 people there, where there were 60,000 people there, and the place was just electric. One of the great moments, I mean, it's, it's a goosebump moment uh, for anybody who was there, and I was lucky enough to cover that. But, you know, what, what, what happens is you – get a little uh, longer in the tooth and you've been around a little bit, you start remembering the stories and the personalities and the characters probably more than being at the World Series or Super Bowls and you know, things like that, Final Fours. Those are all great, don't get me wrong. You know, Those are still fantastic events to be at. But the ones that stick in your mind really are some of the stories and people you met along the way. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you have a, you're an author as well as a, a, a news anchor, sports caster. Uh, your, your newest, latest book is called The Right Thing to Do, The Joel Maurer Story. Uh, you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, it's a children's book. And um, it came, I have a speaking business, and, and I speak now all over the country, building world roles and how to be a better leader of impact. And, and because of that, I've written these books, and one of my main stories is a Joel Maurer story, which we turned into a children's book with 100% of the proceeds going to, to two great charities. And uh, so amazing things are still happening with this book and this story that I can't reveal right now. But let me just tell you that this thing is going to have a, 
longer life than people are going to realize. It's 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 pretty incredible. What happens when you throw a little goodness out in the world? And uh, so it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, that's um, you've, you've done a lot of goodness. I also and we want to talk a little bit about Joe Maher, but the other thing that I I realize we're you know doing a little research on you. You've raised more than three million dollars through your celebrity golf tournaments, and and people see you on the news and like, oh yeah, the guy's doing the sports. That's a really big impact, and and thanks to you to, for doing that. Yeah, and we haven't done the tournament for a while, but but I uh, you know, listen, we have a platform and we have an opportunity to help some charities, and, and why wouldn't we? And I the one thing that I've learned in speaking to people I've met is I have many of my best friends in the world are people I met doing charity work or doing work where I could go be part of an event. So um, it, it's always a win-win, and there's always the law of unintended consequences where all of a sudden you just meet people, you hear stories, great things happen. And uh, so um, I, I will continue to do what I can when I can. That's great. Let's talk about Joe Maurer. It sounds like you like this guy a little bit, huh? Baby Jesus. Well, you know, it was just, you know, it was interesting when I was at the uh, the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, and uh, I actually had a chance to uh, to present out at Cooperstown in the Baseball Hall of Fame uh, in their auditorium for the book, and it was a it was a full audience. Joe's mom was there, his wife and his kids were there, which was uh, a little bit uh, I didn't expect that to happen, uh, but. What I realized, two things happened. First of all, the Hall of Fame, they ordered like 150 books, and I said, you don't have enough books. They said, we've never sold more than 100 for any author who came in here. We've had Bob Gibson, Hank Aaron, all this kind of stuff. I said, you don't know Joe Maurer, you don't know Minnesota. They sold out within an hour. You know, wow. So they, yeah. <laughs> they didn't listen to my advice. Um, but what I realized at that Hall of Fame is Joe Maurer, everybody feels that he's one of ours, that – you know, the, the older parents, moms think he's like their son. Dads think, you know, like he's his son. People our age think, you know, we saw him grow up together. You know, my first interview with Joe was when he was a sophomore in high school. So, you know, to see him from that shy kid to all of a sudden the shy adult yeah. up there, you know, being as humble and as uh, talented as he was uh, getting this big award was a pretty cool moment. He's never changed. He's been the same person since he's been a kid, and that's yeah, he's, incredible. He's just rock solid. Yeah. He's, and and I say this in in all sincerity. And I've been around a lot of superstars, you know, from you know Randy Moss to Kirby Puckett to to I mean you you name it on and on. And I say that Joe is the most humble superstar I've ever met, and it's not fake. It's one hundred percent authentic. Very cool. Yeah, that's it. That's. It's hard to do, to be honest with you. When you, you start out and you have the spotlight on you from a, such a young age to, to go through his career and to just not even have a dent in the armor, right? I mean, he's never had yeah. anything. Now, Bobby, it's, it's, it's interesting because the one thing that I've learned is that, you know, when you're that special athlete, by the time you're 16, 17 years old, you start living by different rules. Even if you don't want to change, you're going to get changed a little bit because things just kind of happen for you. Think people do things for you. Your schedule is made for you. You have, you know, 20 colleges trying to get you. You know, that changes a person. It did not change Joe. Yeah, that's it's incredible, incredible story. But speaking of uh, all these superstars you met, Tommy, what are you? Yeah, let's do a little quick hot hot round hot lap with you joe and we're not going to put you too much on the spot we're going to give you a little bit of okay. an out you've met a lot of people tell us if this these people are like you know good dudes like well from what you know you don't know them all the way through and through but like are they good dudes are they yeah give us a oh yeah or give us a eh. <laughs> so we don't have to exactly say already right, here we go uh joe mauer good dude yeah oh yeah uh dave doll you know dave doll dave doll Compli it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dave, Dave is Dave is a great, great guy. Um, you know, Dave and I, we were the bookends for many, many years at KSTP, and we saw a lot of people sit in between us, and Dave and I were always there. And I always said to Dave, I said, you know, they're always looking for this ratings magic. Do you think they'll ever figure out that the guys on the end are the problem, not the guys in the middle? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Dave, oh, yeah, yeah good, good dude. Great guy. Great guy. Uh, Randy Moss? Randy Moss. That one would be complicated. Um, 
I, I would say that uh, Randy was more difficult than he had to be. And he, I think, would look back now and probably have done it differently. You know, when I, when I see, as, as a media person, when you see somebody who was tough on the media all of a sudden become a media person like and they're, you know, jovial and all this kind of stuff, yeah, it, it, it's a little burr in my saddle. I got to be honest with you. <laughs> all right, we'll keep going quick here. Zach Parisi. Great guy. Uh, Stefan Diggs. Um, a little bit more complicated, a prima donna. Oh, yeah. KG. Prima donna. How about uh, Tory Hunter? Great guy. Lindsey Whalen. Awesome. J.R. Ryder. Not a good guy. <laughs> Adrian Peterson. Uh, good guy at heart, but maybe didn't um, have the right people around him. Adam Thielen. Great guy. You got any to add, Bobby? Bobby Finn. <laughs> It's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's great. Uh, God. Well, uh, so going back to the teams, we're going to get a little hot little streak right now. Is there a team right now that you feel like is is going to be – is gonna, which team would you – if you had to pick one of the f big four, which one – the links are going all the way. That's obvious, right? Let's just put that in the in the bucket right now. That's it. Of the, of the other big four, which team's going the furthest this year? You know, it's it, it's it's probably the lowest hanging fruit and the easiest to say the Timberwolves because of how far they went last year. And um, I I like the fact they mixed it up. I think anytime you try to run it back, it's never the same. Just ask Brett Favre when they brought him back for that second year coming out, out of retirement. It is never the same. So by mixing it up, I know fans are upset they got rid of Cat, but you know what? What I found out a long time ago is that you're going to miss some of his strengths, but you're going to find out that the people they brought in have strengths of their own that are going to help the team. This team's going to have a lot of depth. I think there's a little more pressure on Chris Finch now because he has so much, so much interchangeable depth. parts that yeah. he has to kind of work into that lineup to try to figure out how it's going to work. But, but uh, I wish Cat good luck in uh, New York. Good guy. What do you think of that trade, Joe? Um. I, I liked it from the standpoint, as I said, that the shakeup part, and I liked it from the standpoint that if they had waited a year, they would get very little for yeah. Carl Anthony Towns just because his contract would have been so big. He would have been a year older, you know, and, and Cat hasn't played healthy the last two seasons in a row. If Cat would get hurt this year, that would drop his, uh, his value down. So I think the trade was at the right time. Even though, and and I think that Cat, you know, obviously replacing his offense is going to be tough. But, you know, how many times did Cat drive down the lane completely out of control? You know, there were three playoff games that Cat really didn't show up in this past year. So there are ways the team can improve without Cat. Oh, I like the trade a lot. I think, yeah, I think it's a big trade, and I think it's going to add more attitude. Uh, I think Julius Randle has got a little chip on his shoulder, and we need that guy. We need that guy that's going to bang a little bit. Stick up for Rudy. Rudy's getting obliterated by everybody. And so it's going to add a little attitude, I think, to the team. And, and I remember, think you called it early yeah, on, Yeah, DiVincenzo. Right? Remember I said, yeah, we're gonna, we got to get this guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting because uh, Julius is saying all the right things about how happy he is. He loves Finch. And if he stays happy and doesn't become a distraction or have erratic behavior, he's really going to help the team. And Devin Chenzo, they've been looking for a player like him for years. Right. You know, kind of that plug-and-play guy that they can put in any situation. And quite frankly, a guy who can just shoot the lights out. You know, so so um, once again, you know, it was some addition by subtraction. Yep, I agree. Uh, wild, I think, are kind of going to be a little bit status quo. Again, I said it last year. I think they always maybe perform a little better than maybe they should without – deep pockets but uh what do you think about for the wild this year um you know they're going to be in the middle and over half the teams in the nhl make the playoffs so you know i'm not sure what their goaltending situation is going to be gustafson took a step back last year flurry i'm not sure they should have re-signed him especially if they're trying to get yeah, jesper walstead into the equation you know carrying three goalies that's that's like having two quarterbacks. You don't have one if you have two. Yeah. You know, that it's that so I think that's gonna be a little bit clumsy at times and he's gonna be going back and forth to Iowa and 
And uh, he's the future goalie of the franchise, so it would have made more sense just to have him back up. And and by the way, I heard they tried pretty hard in the offseason to trade Gus and just they had no takers. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's the odd man out. I think Fleury's still teaching, I guess, more for Jasper. But uh, I think Gus is yeah. – the, commer- the Gus Bus commercial is going to be uh, – Changing and moving on. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see how much, how many uh, games they give Flurry because I think they're going to want to pull him back if they want to get those other guys ice time. Yeah. Uh, all right. Then before we get to the Vikes, Twins, are you thinking Polads need to move on out? You probably know all these guys. You you got deep connections. Everybody is upset with the Twins. People are going crazy. Yeah. I've never heard it before so so uh, vehemently. But what do you think? Well, I I think that I think Joe Polad, uh, you know, it picked a really bad time to try to claim that the twins were a business and yeah. uh you know just the basically saying that the twins franchise is all about money to the family that's yeah. not a good starting point for the <laughs> no. fan base because no. it's bigger than that it's well, bigger than that you know they they bought the team for a couple hundred million dollars it's now worth 1.6 billion dollars shut up take a loss now and then and when you sell the team you'll make it all back you know and and to go from what they did last year and then decide that they were going to cut the salary $30 million was just a bad move, and they admit why they did it. The other thing that I will say is that this whole TV thing is part of a factor, but quite frankly, why didn't they have a plan B? The Twins did not. Yeah, I don't get that. I mean, you're losing – baseball is losing fans enough, and then when you're holding out and fighting and then people can't watch it, they're moving on. They're You know, they're losing their love for a uh, historic franchise, and, and – that's too bad. I'm a baseball historian, and to lose that, to not be able to turn on your team and watch them, you know, over just sitting on the couch at night, it's it sucked. It, it's it's a it's a big blow, and it's a bad. It, as far as business decisions, that was a bad one. Well, it's just you know, it, it has to be about the fans, and and you know, Joe Pola had made it about the money, and which was a dumb idea. Yeah. And and it's it it is interesting because. You know, the family turned it over to Joe, and, you know, he was the guy who kind of changed the look of the uniforms and brought the M in. You know, if you, you kind of look at what he's done so far, Joe might want to get some advice from some other people before he makes big decisions. <laughs> oh, I agree. All right, let's move on to the purple. All right, let's talk about the purple. Uh, is this team for real? Is this team going to be one of the greats? Is this like people weren't expecting much, and all of a sudden we might go all the way? What's going to happen with this purple team? I'm not ready to call him one of the greats yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I will say this, you know, their defense is good enough to lead them to a championship. So their offense just has to not lose games for them. And right. and it helps it that they can be a little more effective on offense than that. And, and they certainly have proven that in four of the first five games that the offense can be more than just kind of a uh, – game control kind of offense they had a little explosiveness and so forth so it's all the way it's early it's early you know this is a long season yeah i'm i'm old enough to remember the last time the vikings started off five and oh they went eight and eight <laughs> yeah. I'm not yeah. that. <laughs> i brought I'm not that up this weekend and when people were yeah, hyping up i'm the not five gonna say that's and... gonna happen but you know and and i think sam Darnold is is great i think he's a system quarterback um but he's still Sam Darnold, you know, and, and he's shown it a few times with some of his passes, uh, you know, certainly showed it in the, uh, the last game, um, you know, to allow the Jets to come back like that. But, um, you know, it, I, I'm, I'm more in a wait and see mode just because it's so long. One injury can change everything. As a matter of fact, it did. You know, Aaron Jones, we just found out how important he is to that offense. What's the word on him day to day, week by week? I don't think he'll play against Detroit. Um, and uh, I, I, some people are thinking he's going to play against Detroit. I'm, and here's why. And it's the same thing with TJ Hawkinson. They come back and have a Thursday night game right after that. So would they potentially decide, you know what, I don't want to play a guy who's either coming off the injured list or a little bit dinged up, play him on Sunday and have to bring him back on Thursday. Yeah. So maybe we just hold off for Thursday. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'd keep him out. I mean, he's too important to the to the end. We need him. Yeah. You uh, need him in December. And, absolutely. And, you know, what, the reason Green Bay got rid of him is they didn't have him in December. Well, they, I, I just think they're playing with house money right now. I mean, they're 5-0. and 0. 
they they didn't expect this. If they were going to be two and three, I think they would they would have been okay with that. But five and zero, oh, you're playing with the house money. Let the guys rest a little bit. If you take a loss, you take a loss. You're not going to go seventeen and zero. Oh. So uh, do the right things for the end because this cha- like you said, the defense, the defense is. Uh, it, I mean, they are on. I mean, they're great. Those additions they got they picked up, Van Ginkle. I mean. Van Ginkle is that dude's unreal. Yeah, I mean, he just reads the plays and he knows what they're doing. So I, I just think the additions they made with who they already had, the Stefan Gilmore pickup, those are those are monster pickups. The pole ads, yeah, they should go talk to the Wolves, see what's yeah. going on, <laughs> how, how you're supposed to do it because they're doing the right things. Yeah. All right, real quick, let's talk about Denheads and Denheads is your um, is your place to go when you have obviously dents in your cars you need car repair if if you're down in florida right now and north carolina and they're getting hammered uh maybe they should bring their car up to bloomington to go to den heads because den heads has paintless dent removal and it's your key for a flawless ride that will get you feeling good feeling smooth all fall long all winter long and why settle for less when you can have the best uh they have minnesota's highest rating uh, it's Minnesota's Den Head that delivers excellence. Uh, check them out for simple dents. Use common sense and go visit the guys at Den Heads. They're awesome. And Den Head sponsors what we call Joe is the Dick of the Week. And and what that is is Bobby always says, be a good person, okay? Don't be a, be don't be a jerk. Don't be a dick. Be a good person. And we've got a couple dicks of the week, I think. And we're gonna have a little debate here. And Joe, you might have to help us out with who's who's the bigger jerk. I think, and you being a sportscaster, I think it's ESPN. You turn on ESPN on a Monday morning, they talk about the Cowboys for an hour. You turn on uh, Get Up, all they do is talk about one sports team. How do they, I don't get it. They don't, like the Vikings are hot. You've got uh, the Texans are hot. You've got hot teams. All they do is talk about the one team. I know it's a big, Texas is a big football market. I know New York is a big baseball market, everything market. You get five minutes to talk about sports at the end of the night, and you put everything in there. You mix it up. You give people what they want. They talk about the same team for – I'll get up, watch a little get up, go take a shower, come back. They're still talking about the same dang thing. <laughs> All right, Joe, and mine, mine is Aaron Rodgers. I can't imagine coaching him. I mean, his last two coaches, he just they, they have no say in what he does. And when Ro- he pushed Robert Sala after that TD pass a few weeks ago – I knew there was more to this. There had to be more to it. Sure enough, two weeks later, I mean, the Jets aren't playing the greatest. Their defense looks great. Offense looks looks rough. But at the end of the day, you got to do what your coaches are telling you to do. And I think Aaron Rodgers is just turning into Reg Dunlop where he's just taken over and nobody else can say anything to him. All right, Joe, you get to, you get to choose. All right. Well, Tommy, I'll say this first. Uh, I gave up on ESPN a long time ago. <laughs> These talking heads shouting at each other, all trying to be, you know, some superstar thing. I, I don't have time for that. <laughs> Two, I, I would uh, think that Rodgers is in the D Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> That's the yeah. new one. Yeah, just but 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 think about it. I mean, his, his body language was so bad in that London game. It was like, come on, pretend you care a little bit, and it's all about him. So. Um, I'm gonna go with Bobby. Aaron <laughs> Rodgers is in the D Hall of Fame. God. I love it. Yeah, yeah. That's. Uh, what, what, do you have? Do you have a dick of the week, Joe? Do you have no, something that? And it doesn't need to be a person or a team or whatever. It can be just anything that just kind of just needles at you. No, I, I guess if I would have thought about it, it would have been. Uh, that that would have been the case. It would have been Rodgers. <laughs> yeah. Bobby wins again. Yep. All right, fine. Two oh. points for Bobby. Yep. All right, Bobby, let's also talk about our Stoli Bar Review. If you're if you're out there having a cocktail, buddy, make sure you pour yourself a Stoli. They're delicious. Stoli's fantastic. And this week's Stoli Bar Review is Sax. Sax. Sax and Vadness Heights. Yo, Joe, you ever been up to Sax and Vadness Heights? It's connected to the ice arena up there by Gentry High School. Yeah. No, <laughs> Joe stays out of the trouble. He doesn't want people bugging him all the time, yeah, right? But yeah, Sax is a good place when you you know you're j- running over there in between periods, and you know you just stop over for a quick one and have an appetizer, and they get it's a pretty nice place. Got a lot of lot of different stuff there. Do you remember Sax when they had the lobster claw machine? 
<laughs> no, I don't remember you, that. Did you get stuffed animals? What'd you get? No, you got lobsters. Lob- real lobsters. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. I thought you were just talking about the claw it was like a lobster claw. <laughs> they no. do have it, but they catch real lobsters. They catch real lobsters. No they dro- they You grab one and then they serve it up to you. God, we <laughs> always say the, like the high points of a good bar are golden tea, pole tabs, <laughs> touch tunes, but also a lobster Lobsters. claw machine. We got to yeah. add that to the mix. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Bobby, you liked it a lot. Uh, good food. They got good drinks. F- food was, food was solid. I'd give it an eight, eight, five, maybe. Okay. Yep. Drinks. I mean, obviously drinks are always minimum nine. So I'm going to give it a nine one. All right. How about service? Service is solid. Yeah, service was, uh, you know, they got a lot of people running around there. They, you're not sitting too long without, uh, without having a full drink in your yeah. right in front of you. So service is, I'll say it eight nine. Oh, okay. Jeez, you don't want to go nine. You're gonna go eight nine. Eight you nine. Yeah, it's gonna be sure. just before it. Yep. How about atmosphere? Is it a rough crowd? Is it like unruly? Does it get crazy in there? Depending on the team that pl- that's playing. <laughs> yeah, if White Bear Lake's playing in there, forget <laughs> it. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I mean, the atmosphere changes so, so much because I think most of the people in there are just, uh, just there for a little bit before their kid plays and yeah. buzzing over in between periods. So I don't think it's, I don't think they have a lot of regulars there. My father in law is a regular. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> I he stand is. corrected. Yeah. Him and his old postal workers, they all hang out there. They look for a new bar because their old bar shut down and, and they, they like it. They sit at the end of the bar and I'd say going, like maybe one or two going nights postal a week. in there. They go a little postal. Atmosphere? Yeah. Atmosphere, I'll, I'll give uh, a 9-1. Wow, all right, so good. So now, a couple, couple questions. Do they have the golden tea? They do have golden tea. Do they have touch tunes? They do have touch tunes. Really? I've never played touch tunes in there. I know they have pull tabs. They have a lot of pull tabs. I've seen Dan Jarvis <laughs> yeah, play right. pull tabs in there. Do they have Stoli? They do, yes. Oh, absolutely. wow, they've got all four. All right, they've got the, what do we call it, the quadfra- quadfracta? <laughs> Fabulous four. Fabulous four. Fabulous four. All right, so that's great. I, they're looking at about a 9-3, I'm guessing, in there, since with the bonus points. All right, check out Saks. That's part of the Stoli, Stoli Vodka Bar Review, one of our favorites. All right, Joe, let's get into it. So um, I put together a little bit of best Minnesota sports moment bracket. And now I don't have in there when uh, – the what was it the purple came back uh, and had a or no it was the twins came back after beating Detroit as one of the top moments in here, but I did oh, put game one sixty three yeah game I, yeah game one sixty three I do have sixteen others though they're kind of like everything from the twins to the to the Vikes, so uh, we'll post this online too so everybody can play along so let's go to the top of the bracket here we've got the Minneapolis miracle against basically the Met Stadium miracle where Tommy Kramer threw. First, uh, it was like a hook and ladder, and then he hit like a 50-yard bomb to Ahmad Rashad. Hail Mary. That was 1980. Not a lot of people remember that. That was before you were even on the air at KSTP. You were probably working somewhere else at the time, maybe. You were probably in you were probably in grade school at the time, Joe, right? Just sure. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, so Minneapolis Miracle against Tommy Kramer's Hail Mary pass. What do you like him better there? You know, um, I've certainly seen enough video on uh, Tommy Kramer's uh, miracle throw, but I'm going to go with Minneapolis miracle. The only disappointing thing about the Minneapolis miracle is what happened after that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they just got hammered in Philadelphia. And quite frankly, it was partly because they never recovered from the Minneapolis miracle. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, moving down, we've got the O2 uh, Gophers Hockey National Championship overtime against Maine against the 2004 Wolves. They make the Western Conference Finals with KG, Latrell Sprewell, and the boys. What do you like better there? That's a really good one. Um, and, and uh, you know, I don't want to diss Gopher Hockey, but the 2004 run for the Wolves was, was pretty special. And... Um, you know, certainly from from covering a standpoint, I went to all the games out in L.A. and uh, that was an experience uh, in it, uh, in and of itself. I was uh, sitting in the second row and I, I took a one of those little notebooks, you know, those yellow pad notebooks, and I wrote down all the celebrities that I could spot from my seat or were sitting close to me. Lionel Richie was behind me and Marla Maples was two seats down. Jeez, uh, Marla Rob Maples. Reiner was in front of me. Denzel was right down. The, I mean, it was like crazy. So having this experience in L.A. Um, that, that kind of uh, topped it all. And quite frankly, that, that was an NBA championship team. 
the first time a team makes a run in anything, it's it's the most fun. So I'm going to pick. All the right, Wolves. you're picking the Wolves. Bobby, what's your favorite Lionel Richie song while we're on the topic? Well, um, hello. Oh, great, good, good pick. Yeah. Uh, all right, next up, uh, it's a tough one. Okay, you got the '87 World Series victory for the for the Twins. Uh, but you also have Jesse Diggins winning gold. Uh, you know, local girl. Uh, we like her here on the east side of town. Uh, it was I think it was the first time any uh, cross country skiing U.S. woman has won gold medal. Yeah, and the way she did it too, and and who doesn't love Jesse Diggins and and her energy and enthusiasm. But I remember 87, and I remember what it did to this state. Quite frankly, the tri-state area, um, 87 was pretty special. That, that's going to be awfully hard. Top to beat. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Top to beat. All right, let's move down. Uh, we got a wild one. In all 3 the wild knocked out the Avs. First round, I believe it was first round. They make it all the way down uh, to the – To the – Jean Shabask and Jaguar. To the finals. <laughs> but you also have against – Adrian Peterson rushing for 2,000 yards, which is a special club. Yeah. Uh, coming off ACL surgery, too, yeah. right. which was pretty important. But, you know, and when we talked a little bit earlier, the one thing that you learn in this business is you like to be at an event that gives you goosebumps. When the Wild scored on, it was, uh, at that time, it was Patrick Waugh, the greatest goaltender in the mm-hmm. world, to advance to advance, uh, the knock out the abs. I remember I was sitting next to Mark Rosen in the press box in Denver, and we looked at each other and said, how the hell did this just happen? <laughs> so it was one of those moments yeah. that you'll, I'll never forget. So I think, I think I'm going to go with the wild, wild knocking out the ass. All right, we're going with Wild. Who scored yeah. that goal? You remember? Andrew Burnett. Yeah, Burnett. Andrew, Andrew, Burnett. Andrew Burnett. Nice. All right, one of my favorite moments, Jack Morris, 10 innings, uh, 91 World Series victory. This is in the bottom bracket. Big, big moment uh, against uh, uh, going up against Herbeck, pulling off Ron Gant in that uh, same, maybe not the same game, but it was also a 91 World Series. I love Herbie, but we got to go with Jack on that one. <laughs> yeah. A quick little sidelight story on that one. So after the Kirby has the big game in game six, and we're all sitting down in the bowels of the Metrodome, they would bring the starting pitchers up for a news conference. This is this is like midnight now, getting ready for game seven. News says... In the immortal words of Marvin Gaye, let's get it on. <laughs> I, turned, I turned to the person next to me and I said, I did a Jack, I did a, a Jack Buck. I said, the Twins are going to win the World Series. Because yeah. I saw that look on Morris's yeah. face and I just thought, no one's going to want to pit, hit against this guy. And Jack was so competitive. It was, uh, it was one of those great moments I'll never forget. Did you know, speaking of that, had, do you know what Jack said to TK when he came out? Basically, you're not pulling me. Yeah. <laughs> pulling me out. I'm Probably sure there's some explicit swear words right? in there, too. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Jack, great. I saw Jack Morris at the, the Maurer Hall of Fame celebration, and I was telling him, four guys from St. Paul all in the Hall of Fame. I said, there's only one other city that claims that. And he said, yeah, it's Atlanta. But he said one of the four guys in the Atlanta area like, is 50 miles away from Atlanta. He goes, in St. Paul, we're three miles from each other. We should get all the credit. So Jack can still be competitive at his old age. Oh, he is a bulldog. There was no doubt. Yeah, gosh, yeah. Jack was a legend. Yeah, I'd love to get Jack on the show. Yeah, he lives he out would... here, doesn't he? I think he lives out in Delwood. Or... Yeah, he lives yeah. out this way somewhere, yeah. All right. Uh, so, Jack, yeah, sorry, Herbie. You're going You're going to lose out to Jack Morris, but still very special moment. Uh, all right, let's go down to the next bracket. We got... Herschel Walker, first game as a Viking, blows a tire. Running out of his shoe. Runs out of his shoe, runs it all the way back. We thought that was going to be the the turning point for the Vikings. Um, Against Lindsey Whalen, and she won four rings with the Lynx. She's a special player. What what are you thinking there? Oh, that's Lindsey all the way. And and I go back to Lindsey when she was a sophomore at college, and they were drawing 500 people to those games. And, and we went over to do a story because we heard about this great little athlete for the Gophers. Well, by the time she was a senior, they were packing the place and playing in Williams Arena instead of playing over in the sports pavilion. So uh, Lindsay was a transformational player. She was Caitlin Clark for Minnesota. Yeah. Now, Caitlin Clark was Caitlin Clark for the entire nation. But if you look back, what Lindsay did for women's and girls basketball in the state of Minnesota was Caitlin Clark-like. Yeah. 
That's Special a player. For sure. Loved watching yeah. her play. All right. Uh, we got two more brackets to go. We'll get through these. Uh, the North Stars 91 Cup Finals. They go up. I think they played against the Pen Penguins. Penguins, yep. Uh, they had a nice run. But you also got Randy Moss on, I think it was Monday Night Football. He goes three touchdowns for 163 against uh, the Cowboys. Yeah, that was the uh, that was the Thanksgiving game, right? That one you're talking about? Yep, yep. Yeah, that, uh, yeah I think I got to go with Randy because, once again, a, a transformational player. You know, Randy could be difficult, but, but you think about – Danny Green taking Randy when all these other teams passed uh, because he just knew what Randy could do. And uh, you know, Randy ended up being one of the best of all time. Just uh, amazing. So I'll, I'll say that was kind of one of his breakout games. So we'll go with that one. And Randy, probably the best media personality we know, right, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, moving down. Just cash, homie, just cash. <laughs> yeah. just straight cash. cash. Yeah. All right, Kirby Puckett, we'll see you tomorrow night. Game 691 against uh, when uh, when they drove down and picked up old Brett Favre from the <laughs> airport. What we, those were both pretty big moments. What do you think? Well, the Brett Favre moment was one of the more embarrassing moments in Twin Cities television history. I mean, the helicopter <laughs> following him from from the airport to Winter Park. So, so that's where that one ranks in my book. Uh, <laughs> I remember doing it. I'm saying, I was looking up there, saying, "Who the hell has the helicopter up?" <laughs> and someone said, "That's Channel Five's helicopter." I was like, "Oh." <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, Kirby Puckett's my, my, my favorite guy of all time, you know, as far as personality to cover. Uh, you know, his character, his charisma. He, you know, when somebody dies, they always say he could light up a room when he walked in the room. They're not lying when they talk about Kirby Puckett that way. That's the way he was. And uh, as a matter of fact, one of those bats back there uh, behind me, uh, after Kirby retired, I went into his, uh, his office and I was trying to get him to sign some baseballs for my golf tournament i would give away my first prize was everybody got a kirby pocket autograph baseball for the first team and kirby would always say i would sell them on ebay as i'm walking <laughs> out he goes schmitzy that's what he called me he was uh, just a second he went and grabbed the bat and he signed it for me thanking me for uh, covering him his entire career so that's that's one of my treasures yeah he started he was a rookie when you started too right yeah, yeah, yeah 85 so right uh, i think he got here in 84 so but but basically he was just starting right so, yeah, he was bigger than life. There's no doubt about it. So do you like uh, that moment better than Randy Moss's uh, three-touchdown moment? Yes. All right, we're going Kirby. How about Lindsey Whalen against Jack Morris? Um, boy, I'll go Morris. All right, Black Jack. Top bracket, we got the 87 World Series win against the Wild, making it to the uh, finals. 87. 87. How about the Minneapolis Miracle against the T-Wolves making a deep run? Um, oh, that's kind of a toss-up yeah. there. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll go with the Miracle. All right, Minneapolis Miracle. Uh, how about 87 against the Minneapolis Miracle? 87. 87. That brings down to the last game. You got Blackjack Morris in 91 against Kirby. We'll see you tomorrow night. Those are... Those are yeah, right. both yeah. epic. Pick that. The, 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 the fact you can quote, and we'll see you tomorrow night, <laughs> um, I will say Kirby Puckett. Yeah. I mean, the only one better was Al Michaels. Do you believe yeah. in miracles? That yeah. that call, we'll see you tomorrow night, was yeah. so epic. It was. I mean, it's unbelievable. So, so I get chills thinking about it. Yeah. So yeah, then we're we, basically we still, when we're golfing, my buddy and someone like takes a putt and, you know, drives at 15 feet past the pin you know somebody will <laughs> somewhere in the round yeah and we'll see you tomorrow night <laughs> <laughs> all right so that takes us to basically you like the 91 world series or the 87 world series right. um i'm gonna go with 87 just because you know i don't know how old you guys are but just to remember 20. what it did for this city and this state i mean it was magical and everybody the first time is always the best time and we don't even have to say it in any other <laughs> comparison. Yeah. Mode. Okay. <laughs> yes. But but there's no question. You know, it's it when it gets to be old hat or your expectations. I remember in '87, the Twins won 85 games, and and they were just as Bob Gebhardt, the GM at the time, said we were just trying to get organized. You know, Andy McPhail was, but Gebby was under Andy. But they're trying to get organized, and they win the World Series. Yeah. And that That's Cardinals right. team was loaded. I mean, that was that was so epic. I mean. Both World Series to go 
every home team won every game. And it, I mean, just, it was incredible. And that team would not have done it today because at, at that time, there weren't all those rounds of playoffs. Right. Because you know, the, the Twins really only had like two and a half starters on yeah. that team. So, so today, in today's world, they would not have had a chance. Speaking of uh, saying things on air that uh, you, know, you don't want to, <laughs> you didn't know what you were going to say. You had a little uh, on air the other night. Last night you got, or what was it, Tuesday night? Uh, one of, I think it was the main broadcaster. She said the Wild were giving out jer- uh, jerseys to fans that were. Uh, Taking shirts off. Their yeah, so they, they went to the, the fans that were season ticket holders, and I think it was Felino took his shirt off, and the and your and your the co-host said, oh, yeah, I like it when they took, take their shirt off. And you, you gave her a jab. I thought it was so great on TV. You said, like, oh, you like it when the guys take their shirts off? And she, she was laughing, and you were laughing at her, too. And it was great. Right. Yeah. You know, I always say you don't know what the line is until you cross it. And, <laughs> and, and, believe, and believe me, I've crossed it a few times. But, uh, you know, I, I'm at the stage now where I kind of get the, you, you know, the grandpa excuse. Well, that's just Joe. You know, yeah. <laughs> so, so what's what's it. one comment you take back in your over your career? Is that Oh, boy. There, there's probably a lot. There, there'd be a lot. Of them. There yeah. really would be a lot of them. Um, I'm just trying to think of one. You know, there there are times when you say something to be funny and you hurt somebody. Uh, yeah, Bobby you know, does that to me every day. Yeah, yeah. You, you look back at those, and you know, the the one thing that I've learned is that you know, in sarcasm, there's always truth. Yeah, you know, sarcasm. You think there's it's kind of funny, but the reason it's kind of funny is there's a little truth there. Sure. Like if, right. you, if you make fun of somebody, for example, golfing, that they're a slow golfer. You know what you're telling them. A You're slow a golfer. slow golfer. Speed <laughs> up, you. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, well, I mean, we appreciate your time. I know we, you know, you got other engagements to make. Um, yeah, thanks, But Joe. this has been great. I appreciate it. Um, after football season's over, uh, I sent Dahl, Dave Dahl a text and said, i got to get Joe down here and have a couple beers and have some fun with him. So maybe we can get you back on at some point in studio. But... <laughs> If you can drag if you can drag Dagle, Dave along, that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Dave's, the big, Dave's the biggest homer I've ever seen in my life. He is <laughs> such a Minnesota homer. The reps are always out against the Minnesota team <laughs> all the time. I mean, just it's unbelievable. And the announcers, all the announcers hate Minnesota. <laughs> Dave, Dave, I said, Dave, you're a stereotype for a rube. That's funny. <laughs> no, that's great. Yeah, it would be awesome. So, but what you do appreciate your time. I mean, I know it. Uh, Got a lot of things going on, but uh, we'll wrap up. And uh, just want to thank everyone. You know what? Before we want to wrap up, we we're talking about charities and everything. Down in uh, in Dave, down in Florida and North Carolina, they're dealing with a lot of stuff. So, you know, try to if you, if you got a little extra, you know, give give to the Red Cross Disaster Relief. It's uh, www.redcross.org. A lot of people need uh, need assistance down there, and uh, our prayers and our thoughts and prayers are going out to them. But So uh, thanks, everyone, for listening. We can be heard on Spotify, Apple, YouTube, and all other platforms where you get your podcast. Please like, subscribe, and tell a friend about us. Last of all, just like I learned growing up on the east side, work hard. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Tell it like it is. Help your neighbors. Try to contribute in a positive way. Smile, laugh, and be a good person. Most of all, don't be a dick. We're out. Thanks, Thanks, Joe. Joe. Thanks, Joe. Have a great day. Appreciate it. Great. That was been easy. Thanks. Straight talk on the east side in a world of sideways. Bobby fitting on the mind.